you, Brother Mo. Amen. 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 Thank you, the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. But this morning, I hope you guys are ready to receive Amen. what the Amen. Spirit of God has to say to each and every one of us. Amen. 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 I hope you guys came with an open heart and open ear to hear to receive. Yes. Amen. 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 So if you have your Bibles, and I hope you do have your Bibles, it's good to see Brother Rick and Bell. Carlos in the house of God. Yes. Have you time visitors? First time visitors? No? Yeah, Bunch of homies, huh? <laughs> That's okay, homie. Don't you know me? <laughs> Amen. One of these days I'm going to learn how to do that little two-step off. <laughs> Amen. Then I'm going to do four steps and six steps. <laughs> Amen. But this morning I'd like for all of you to turn over to the book of 1 Corinthians. Chapter... Uh, Chapter 9, starting in verse 24. Amen. How many people remember January 1st? How many people made a resolution on January 1st? Have you kept it? Did you follow through? Huh? You said you were going to lose weight. I don't see any weight coming off of you guys. Oh, it came back, huh, Tony? Uh -oh. yes. Amen. It's good to see Brother Tony too in church on Sunday morning. Amen. 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 He works at Home Depot. If anybody needs appliances, we'll see that brother in Upland, off a mountain. Amen. Amen. But it's good to see each and every one of you guys here in the house of God this morning. Amen. And do continue to pray for the people in El Paso and Ohio. Amen. Amen. But in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 9, before I give you the title, I want to read a couple of verses. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, starting in verse 24, it says, Do you not know? Tell somebody right away. Do you know? Do you know? Okay, I hope you do know. Amen. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? It can only be one one winner. Amen. He says, run in a way, in such a way, that you may obtain it or apprehend it. Amen. Amen. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. In other words, people, he should have self-control or take control of yourself or your mind and your ways and your actions. Amen. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now it says, they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore it says, I run thus, not with uncertainty. Thus I fight, not as one who beats the air. So this is the key verse, people. But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become what? Disqualified. What good does it do you to go and tell somebody about Jesus Christ if you're not following the ways of Christ? You become disqualified, people. What good does it do me to, to preach the Word of God and tell you guys to read the Word, study the Word, Get into prayer if I don't do it. That's right. I have to do it because that's my lifestyle now. It's a habit now. It's a habit that I can't break, but it's a good habit. Amen. Amen. But it's a good habit. But see, I discipline my body, not only my body, but my mind, and I bring it into subjection. Amen. Don't you know that you have the willpower to overrule anything and everything that's in your life? Amen. Amen. Yes. You have to bring some self-discipline into your life. You got to know who you are in Christ. Amen. Amen. We're all Christians. Blood bought. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ went up to the cross for each and every one of us. We should not take that for granted. Right. Like some people do. Right. Amen. Because people from time to time take the cross for granted. In other words, people, the Word of God tells us in the book of Hebrews, do not go around insulting the spirit of grace. Because you're insulting the spirit of grace. Not only that, but a lot of people are using grace as a crutch just to get over. Amen? And we shouldn't be there, people. We should be disciplining our bodies, people, and our minds and our hearts, our walk with God, 
every single day of our lives, people. Because the enemy would love to throw something at you to get you away from God. Amen. Amen. But we have to discipline ourselves. Yes. Amen. Amen. We have to discipline ourselves yes. in order for us to continue this walk with God. Exactly. And sometimes it's hard and sometimes it's not hard. Amen. You, you can only make it as hard as you want or as easy as you want. Amen. Amen. So you're going to have to learn how to discipline yourself. So let me read verse 27 again. Because that is my foundational scripture for this teaching here today. And I know I'm not going to finish because we got some other things to do at the end of the service. But I hope I give you enough today. And, and if I don't finish, I'm going to take this message into next week. Because it's so important for each and every one that is here this morning to come back next week to hear the fullness of the gospel. Amen. 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 He says, but I discipline my body. Amen. Amen. But I discipline my body and I bring it into subjection. Amen. Amen. Let me share this with all of you again. What good, would it, what good would it do me to tell you guys to go out and start working out? Or get on a diet or start eating better if I don't do it. Amen. I bring my body into subjection. Even when I'm hurting, I still go out and do what I have to. Look, God has given me one temple, one body. And I'm going to take care of this body the best way that I can. Amen. If I have to do away, and I did, I haven't smoked, I haven't gone high, I haven't drank in over 36 years, people. Amen. 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 Because I made a decision to bring my body into subjection because I disciplined myself not to get entangled in the things that used to tangle me up in. Amen. And these are the things that we have to walk away from, people. Amen. Because I used to love to drink. I used to love to drink. I used to love to get loaded. I used to like to go to the bars and the nightclubs. I used to like to do all those things. But you know what? One day when I met the Lord, oh my God, people, He turned my whole life around. And I have never looked back. Amen. Amen. Because I disciplined myself. Look, I don't know, I don't know about you guys, but I know who I am in Christ. And I want to be able to see the Lord face to face one day and say that He can tell me, Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have done well. Amen. 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 And these are the things. It's a fight. It's a battle, people. It's a race that we're in. Every single day we, we're, we're running this race of faith. Amen. Amen. He says, But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified and I don't want to be disqualified I want to be qualified by God yeah. amen. Amen. amen now turn over to the book of Hebrews Hebrews chapter 12 starting in verse 1 this is what the, the word of the Lord is saying here this morning therefore we also it says since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses if we could only see what heaven is like if we could only see how the angels of God are cheering us on just to hold on for one more day, one more day, one more day. I know you can do it. I know you can do it. It's like that little train that was going up the hill. I know I can. I know I can. I know I can. I know I can. Do you know that you can? Whatever you do, don't give up, people. Amen. Don't give up. I don't care what you're going through in life right now. Don't ever give up and don't ever look back. Therefore, we also, it says, Hebrews 12, 1, there also, since we are surrounded by so great of a cloud of witnesses, he says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which is so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Amen? Amen. Looking, it says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy was set before him, endured the cross oh my god people if jesus christ can endure the cross how much more should we endure life in itself everything that we've been through everything that people are going through right now all these issues the setbacks in life amen you may have problems in your life amen you're going to learn how to persevere and follow through and let god help you with this amen the lord says to cast your cares and all your anxieties towards him why because he cares for you he, tend, he send us the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, as one, as the comforter to comfort us. Amen? Amen? Amen. Are you guys awake this morning? Amen. It's only 1225. 
And Norm's is open 24-7. Amen. It says, and let us run. It says, and let us run with endurance. Amen. See, it's a race, people. The race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, mm -hmm. despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. What a blessing to know, people, that Jesus Christ is waiting for each and every one of us. Amen. 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 Look, let me share this with all of you. Death is not a secret. It's not a new revelation, people. Think about this, people. We're all going to die. Right. Huh? We shouldn't say, like in last Illinois, it should be a joy, people, Amen. that when people, when people die and go home with the Lord, we should be rejoicing. Amen. We should be celebrating. Yes, yes we're going to grieve. Where there's going to be sour tears and pain. But the Lord, yes, it's only going to last for a moment because we know that we know that we know where these people are going. Amen. And we should know where we're going. Yes. Amen. Amen. I'm excited about going to heaven. Amen. I don't know about you. Uh, you know, I'm not even sure if I want to be cremated or buried. No me importa. Whatever is cheaper. Yes. Amen. Amen. I want my wife to have some money left over. Amen. Amen. Seriously, people, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. The thing is that we're going to be in the presence of our Lord yes. Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And this is the race. This is the race we are in. Amen. Yes, so now I want to give you a couple of things before I go back into the into the scriptures here. So the title of the message is Discipline. Get in line. Tell somebody, get in line. Get in line. Get in line. Woo! Thank you, Lord. So what does it mean to get in line? It means to get in order and to take control. To get in order and to take control. Amen. 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 So how is it that we get in line? So how is it that you begin to discipline yourselves? We all know what it takes to do whatever we do in life. Amen. 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 Whatever you guys do for a living, you have to discipline yourself. I know that a lot of times Monday mornings come around and the alarm clock is ringing at five and I don't want to get up. But we have to discipline ourselves. Amen. Amen. I don't want to get on the freeways. But we have to. Right. Amen. So we shouldn't be complaining about the things that we have to do here on this earth. Amen. Because it's only for a moment and it's only for a time. Amen. Right. So how do we get in line? The first thing, people, is that we do it through obedience. We do it through obedience. Amen. We obey what the Word of God says. And we remain not only in faith, but we remain faithfulness. Amen. And we're going to have to learn how to persevere. That no matter what happens, no matter what you're going through, you're going to have to endure these things as you're going along. It's like I said, it's only a race. It doesn't matter if you come in last place. As long as you finish the race, people. Amen. 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 And you're going to have to do it with a lot of love, people. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. I don't know, Pastor Bob. I don't know if I'm able to love these people right now. Well, discipline yourself in those areas. Amen. And you're going to have to surrender all your fleshly ways. Pastor Bob, I don't walk in the flesh. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah? When was the last time you had an argument with your wife? Uh -huh. Or your husband? Or you try to discipline your kids? Huh? When was the last time you had an argument with one of your co-workers? Uh -huh. Huh? Did you discipline yourself and say, shut up, zip it up, and throw it away? Oh, heck no. I can tell you something right now that you're going to stand there and fight your way out of this. Amen. Amen. And sometimes you may say a little bad word here and there. Amen. Amen. Guess what? You're going to have to discipline yourself. Amen. 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 Why? Well, I think you guys are awake. I'm going to wake you up here pretty soon. Amen. And we're going to have to learn how to bear the cross. Look at everything that Jesus went through. Huh? If, if, if Christ can go through what he went through and we don't even have to go there, how much easier is life for us? Amen. But too many people are making life too hard for themselves. Amen. And we can't allow procrastination to come into our lives. You sit there and you wonder when and where and how is all this going to happen? And you sit there and you think about this. You're like this, look, within your mind. Let it go, people. 
Amen. Let it go. Let it go. But why is discipline needed? Why do you think you need to discipline yourselves? Amen. Why is it needed? Because it meant it maintains your sound faith. How many people have faith in God? Amen. 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 Then maintain it, people. Don't waver with your faith. Don't waver with your faith, especially when you're praying for something or praying for somebody or you're believing for something. Don't let your faith wander out into La La Land, people. Amen. You can't allow your faith to wander like that. You have to continue to believe for what you're believing for. Amen. 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 And discipline brings what? Correction. Oh, Pastor Bob, you can correct me anytime that you want. Really? When's the last time? When was the last time somebody corrected you and you didn't like it? But you're willing and you said, Amen. Because there's times, people, there will be times, and there probably is times. Because I remember this within my soul as, as our boys were growing up. We had to, we had to bring correction into their lives. Right. And when we said no, that meant no. Amen. So who's the head of household? Who's the mother in this home? Amen. 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 So I hope that I'm speaking truth here this morning Amen. to all of you. Because see, we have to learn how to discipline ourselves. And we have to learn when and where and why. You know, the word of the Lord says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Amen. We can't let people get away with murder. Amen. There's too much junk going on in this world. Amen. So how is it that people, how is it that people need to know? How many people need a change in their lives right now? Amen. I got about 50 cents right here. No, I, I, I put it in the bucket. So I can't give it to you. Amen. No, seriously, people. How many people need changes in their life? Right now? Amen. If you could change just one thing in your life, what would it be? Don't tell me. Take it before the Lord. Because maybe this is the biggest change that you have to make in life. And guess what? You can go with to God for this. He can help you. You can surrender all your ways to Him. Amen. Because there's some changes that we all have to make. But guess what? Nobody in this place is perfect. Okay. Nobody. Nobody in this place is perfect. We need to make some changes. Amen. I don't care who you are, what you are. I don't care how much clout you got. It doesn't matter to God. The thing is that we have to make some changes in our lives, people. And guess what? You're going to have to get in line. You're going to have to discipline your ways just to make these changes happen. Amen. 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 So... I want all of you to turn over. Don't turn over. Amen. <laughs> Don't go to sleep on me. Amen. Turn over to the book of Romans. In the book of Romans chapter 12. In the book of Romans chapter 12 starting in verse 1. It says, it says this. Look, I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is what? Reasonable service. Your what? Reasonable service. Your reasonable service. Amen. You know what that means? I'm talking to the Ministry of Health people in here today. Because this is what you do week after week after week after week. You come here to serve God. You're not serving me and Pastor Marcia. You're serving the Lord. Guess what? This is the house of God. And nobody should restrain themselves or hold themselves back from serving God the way we should. When we need people in the nursery, we need people in the nursery. When we need people in the audio room, we need people out there. When we need more ushers, we need more ushers. When we need people to come in and help us straighten out this place, we need people to help us straighten out this place. We need people. Amen. Amen. And, and and you shouldn't be afraid to volunteer. Amen. There's there's ladies, sister Annette, stand up, please. This lady, she's in charge of children's ministry. She needs more help. All you got to do is serve one day out of the month. Maybe two days out of the month. Now, is that hard to do? I got to be here every week. Pastor Marcia has to be here every week. The worship team has to be here every week. The ministry. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Amen. So, I, I like for any woman that's in here, we're not going to twist your arm. But if you don't show up, we're going to draft you. <laughs> One way or the other, we're going to get you. Amen? Seriously. No, seriously. It's not that hard. All you got to do is rotate, rotate. Look at Brother Jerry. Jerry's been back there for I don't know how long, and he never complains about being back there. 
Almost two years now. Sister Renee, the same way. Yeah. She didn't know anything about laptops and computers or PowerPoint or nothing. Look at where she's at. Amen. She doesn't complain. Brother David, también. And Daryl, yeah. también. Amen. We need help in here, people. Yeah. It's not that hard to serve one day out of the month. Yeah. But Lord, but Lord, but Lord, but Lord. Yeah, and the Lord says, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Seriously, people, we need help in this church. Amen? Amen? And the Word of God is telling us to discipline ourselves. He says, I beseech you, therefore, my brother, to present yourselves. Amen. To present yourselves. Amen? Amen. Amen? So much for that. Amen? Amen. <laughs> and James, in the book of James, go over to the book of James. In the book of James, chapter 1, starting in verse 22, it says, But be doers of the word. Amen? Amen. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer. He is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. Amen? For he observes himself goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks, no, but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this one will be blessed in all he does. Amen. That's a promise from God, people. Amen. That's a promise from God. To come and serve in the house of God? Huh? Well, I don't know. I got to be there Wednesday nights. You know, and I got to be there by 6. And then and, and, and Sunday mornings, I got to be there by 10. But if somebody gave you a ticket for the Super Bowl, you'd be there the day before. Come on. Come on. <laughs> or to the freeway series. <laughs> what if the Dodgers were playing again for the World Series and they gave you a ticket and it was Sunday morning? Come on, don't do that. Come on. You can't be doing that. Uh, <laughs> heads I go to the game, tails I go to church. Oh, I'm going to give you a double sided tails card. <laughs> Come on, people. We have to discipline ourselves. You know, there's times where me and my wife want to do certain things that we can't. Because we know we have to be here. That's right. No, we know that we have to be here. Because we have disciplined our minds and our heart to serve the Lord with all our heart, soul, and mind. Amen? Look at, mira, mira, mira. He's telling us right here. He says, and, and, and it's not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the what? Word. Of the what? Word. No, the work. The work, this one will be blessed in what he does. How many people are, are, are waiting on the blessings of God? Amen. Oh my God, people. Guess what? You're going to have to start working for your blessings. Because that's what it says right here. Amen. I'm going to break it down. A doer of the work. He's not talking about cutting your lawn or washing your windows at home. He's talking about coming to the house and do the work of the Lord in here. Amen. Amen. I can guarantee you something right now. If Sister Annie could get up and do what she... Oh, yeah. I know. Because I heard some things about her. She's a servant. And she was a worker. And she yes. never complains. Yes. Amen. 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 Guess what? Amen. Nobody else is in a wheelchair in here. Right. Oh, my gosh. Amen. I hope I'm speaking truth this morning. Amen. 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 But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father. Go back to chapter of Romans. I'm going to read this again. 
in Hebrews, just a few pages backwards, Hebrews 12, it says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great of a cloud of witnesses, he says, let us lay aside every weight. In other words, people, he's trying to tell us to let go of everything that is holding us back from following and serving who God is. Amen. Too many people are complaining in the house of God. Yeah. Guess what? You're not. Did you guys come to the wilderness? No, look at everybody. Everybody has a house. You get hot, you go turn the air conditioner off. You get cold, you go turn the heater on. If you're hungry, you go in the refrigerator. If you're hungry, you go out and cook something, go out to eat somewhere. We've got it made, people. Yeah. We've got it made. Amen. No, we've got it made. Tell somebody, we got it made. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, people, and yet we still complain. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? No, yet we still complain. He says, and he's telling us here, look, let us lay aside every weight. Everything that holds you back yeah. from serving God the way we should. Yeah. Have you disciplined yourself in the things that we should be doing? Huh? What is holding people back from serving God the way we should? Huh? Boy, it sure is quiet in this place. Amen? Amen? Amen. I just wanted to share that with you guys again. Amen? Turn over to the book of Thessalonians. Amen? In the book of Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Mm -hmm. Amen. Are you guys there? Mm -hmm. Starting in verse 6. Are you guys there? Yes. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Starting in verse 6. He says... But we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw from every brother who walks disorderly and not according to the tradition which he received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to follow us, for we were not disorderly among you, nor did we eat anyone's bread free of charge, but work with labor and toil night and day that we may not be a what? A burden to who? To any of you. In other words, people, Paul worked for a living too, so he wouldn't be a burden to the church. Guess what? He had to discipline himself in the things of God. Amen? He could have easily said, you know what? I'm preaching, I'm teaching, I'm forming all these churches. I think I should take a little bit from the basket. He never did that, people. He never took anything because he didn't want to be a burden to the church. Amen? Amen? Amen. And these are examples that he left us with. Amen. In verse 8 he says, Nor did we eat anyone's bread free of charge, but work with labor, toil, night and day, that we may not be a burden to any of you. Not because we did not have the authority, and they did, to make ourselves an example of how you should follow us. Amen. Amen. But even when we were with you, we commanded you this. If anyone will not work, neither shall he eat. Amen. 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 I've seen so many, and this is just me, I'm just saying this. I've seen a lot of men that are not willing to work. That are waiting and willing to wait on somebody just to what? Give him a hand up? Don't you know that God has given you a talent to do certain things in life? Go ahead and do it and follow through. Discipline yourself in these areas, people. Amen. It doesn't take much to discipline yourself, especially when you're hungry. Amen. I tell you what, when I turned my business over to my son, I didn't care who I had to go and work for. Amen. Hey, as long as the fruits are coming in, just show me the money, honey. Amen. There's no pride in that. Amen. Again, verse 9, it says, not because we did not have authority, but to make ourselves an example of how you should follow us. Mm -hmm. For even when we were with you, we commanded you this. If anyone will not work, neither shall he eat. For we hear that there are some, there are some who walk among you in a disorderly manner and not working at all, but are busybodies. Mm -hmm. 
These are heavy words, people. Huh? Amen. Now those who are such, we command and exhort through our Lord Jesus Christ that they work in quietness and eat their own bread. But as for you, brethren, do not grow weary in doing good. Amen? Amen. Now if anyone does not obey our word in this epistle or in this letter, he says, note that person. And do not keep company with him that he may be ashamed. That's right. You know how many people have come into this place and taken advantage of us? Huh? They come and they go. They come and they go. They come and they go. Man, it's like a broken record, people. After a while, Luca is telling us here not to keep company with him. Why? Because they'll drain you and they'll pull you and they'll use you and they'll misuse you. Amen? And then they'll abuse you. Amen? And that's not right, people. But Pastor Bob, we're supposed to walk in love. We're supposed to give. Yeah, but you better have enough wisdom too, though. That's right. To know when and where and how to give. Yes. Amen? Yes. You just don't give to somebody just because. Amen? Oh, Pastor Bob, uh, I need to borrow a thousand dollars. Well, let's see why you need to borrow a thousand dollars. Why do you want to borrow a thousand dollars? From the church? Really? Well, let me see. Let me go look at your tithing record. Oh. Well, I don't see your name in my book. Oh, my gosh. Wait a minute. How do you spell your name? <laughs> With a what? With a name? Oh, it's in the front. <laughs> now, how do you... The miss. Do you think it's right for me just to give away the church's money? Mm -hmm. huh? Absolutely. And find out why? That ain't right, people. I'm speaking truth here. See, a lot of pastors won't say this. Amen? Why should I? And put the burden on the church. Huh? Hey, we don't have a lot of money. But I thank God that God provides and sustains us and meets our needs at the end of the month. Every month. Amen? But I'm not going to be that quick to give away anything to anybody that doesn't deserve it. Amen? So why should I give anything to anyone? You've been sitting here, what, six months, a year? And I don't see your name on the giving book? Mm -hmm. Now, do you think that's right? Do you think that's right? No. Huh? no. It's not right. I'm speaking truth here. Am I speaking truth? Yes. In love. I'm, I love you guys. But that's why I'm telling you the truth. Right. Amen? So you guys will grow up from all this. What, 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 you know, it's like I, I shared Wednesday night about... Abel and Cain and how God accepted Abel and rejected Cain. Why? Because Cain just came with leftovers. But Abel came with the first fruits. The first flock from his flock. He gave from his first. You know that Abel was the first tither? It wasn't Abraham. It was Abel that gave. Amen? So what, why, what, why do people hold back from giving what belongs to God? Look, this is not a tithing message. This is something to do with what the Word of God has to say. Why do people hold back? Don't you want the blessings of God? That's what, it, that's what the Lord told. Look, if you do well, then well will come to you. That's what the Word says. I don't know about you, but I have enough faith in this Word. I don't know about none of you. I know that my faith and my wife's faith put together, man, I tell you what, we, we can move mountains. Amen? We can make things happen. You actually believe that God has blessed this ministry, huh, the way He has? Why? Because it starts at the head, people. Amen? I do my part. My wife does her part. We do what we have to when it comes to God, people, and all is well. Amen. The well is deep, and there's a lot of water down there. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Now, where was I? Thank you, Father. Second Thessalonians chapter three, verse six. Amen. He says, "Not because verse nine. He says, not because we do not have an authority, to make, but to make ourselves an example of how you should follow us." For even when we were with you, we commanded you this. If anyone will not work, neither shall he eat. For we hear that there are some who walk among you in a disorderly manner, not working at all, but are busybodies. Now those who are such, 
We command and exhort through our Lord Jesus Christ that they work in quietness and eat their own bread. But as for you, brethren, do not grow weary in doing good. If anyone does not obey our word in this epistle, note that person and do not keep company with him that he may be ashamed. Yet, it says, do not count him as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. In other words, people, warn him about what the Word of God has to say. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 I hope you guys are with me on this. Amen? Amen. Galatians. Go to the book of Galatians. Galatians chapter 3. Amen? I'm going to end with this here. I have to share this with you guys. Amen? Galatians chapter 3, starting in verse 1, it says, All you foolish Galatians, Immediately he called them fools. Yeah. Amen. And he's not saying this just to say it. Because there's a lot of foolishness that is going on in this church. Not that truth and love, but in this church. Amen. Oh, you foolish Galatians. Who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. Do you believe that Jesus Christ was crucified? Amen. Huh? What makes you believe that? that word. Your faith, people. Amen. It's your faith. Amen. This only I want to learn from you. Now he wants to learn something from you. It says, did you receive the spirit by the works of the law? Nope. Or by the hearing of faith? Amen. By the hearing of faith. Amen. Amen. He says, are you so foolish? It says, Having begun in the spirit, are you not being made perfect by the flesh? Are you allowing the flesh to rule over you instead of the spirit of God to guide, lead, and direct you the way we should? You know, it's like Jesus says, look, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So when do we allow the flesh to come into our lives if the spirit of God is in us? Amen. When do we do that? When you get upset? When you get angry? Huh? Or when an issue rises up? Amen. We're quick to get into the flesh, people. Oh, yeah. Come on, don't deny it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> don't deny it, people, because we are so quick to get into the flesh like that. That we're not. That's right. You can get into the flesh so quickly, people, and bring so much disruption oh, yeah. and division within yourself and your family. Amen. You gotta learn how to discipline yourselves. This is what I'm talking about. We're going to have to learn how to discipline ourselves in every area of our lives. Amen. Amen. Verse 2 again. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you not being made perfect by the flesh? The flesh cannot perfect you, but the Spirit can. Amen. Have you suffered so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? How many people have ever gone through some sufferings? Huh? You know, sometimes we go through sufferings by choice. Huh? Because of the choices that we're making. Huh? Sufren porque quieres. Amen. Verse 5, Therefore he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Amen. Just as Abraham believed in God and it was accounted to him for what? For righteousness. He became a friend of God. Why? Because he believed in God. No, he believed in God. How many people believe in God? Amen. Huh? Amen. No, you truly believe in God? You believe, you believe that God can do all things in your life? Amen. 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 Just as Abraham believed in God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Therefore, know. Tell somebody, do you know? Do you know? Amen. Therefore, know that only those who are faith are the sons of Abraham. And Abraham had a lot of faith to believe, people. A promise was given to him at 75 and 25 years later, people, that promise came to pass. Amen. Amen. No, that promise came to pass. Amen. What are you believing for? Are you believing for the promises of God? Yes. No? I know that I am. I'm not wavering with my faith. I'm not wavering with our promises or the things that we're praying for. I'm praying for an expansion and extension of this ministry. Amen? I really am. 
And it's going to come to pass. Amen. Amen. No, it's going to come to pass. Amen. One day we're not going to have enough room in this house. Amen. One day we're going to have to go to a second service. Amen. 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 Seriously, I believe that with all Tomorrow. my heart, people. Yes. I really do. And things are going to get better and gooder. Amen. Amen. We're going to have to start handing out Mr. Goodbar. <laughs> Amen. He says, Therefore know that only those who are of faith are the sons of Abraham. And the scriptures, it says. How many people believe in the scriptures? Amen. Oh my God, people. You have to discipline yourselves in believing in every word that God has to say to us. Amen? Amen. And the scriptures foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preach the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In you all nations shall be blessed. Here it comes, people. So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. Amen. Do you believe in Abraham? Amen. Yes. Look at the blessings. And everything that Abraham received. Yeah. You know that we can too receive the same blessings that Abraham received? Yes. Huh? No, do you believe that? Yes. yes. Do you believe that? Yes. No, say, tell somebody, do you believe? Do you believe? Amen. Let's stand up and pray. We're going to get ready to dismiss, but before we.